Materialists want to use material science to explain consciousness in terms of physical things that we're already conscious of. This approach is illogical and invalid. Physical science already depends on consciousness. Nobel physicist Eugene Wigner pointed out that consciousness is the absolute context of science. Observations of physical phenomena like the nervous system and brain cells are the relative content. We can't possibly explain the absolute context in terms of the relative content. Consciousness is not one of the physical objects that material science observes. It's part of the scientific process. The Sankey philosophy helps us to understand how this is. Conscious scientists do what matter can't do, and they make what matter can't make. They systematically oppose the physical forces to investigate them, so their consciousness can't be a product of the physical forces that they oppose. Objective material science looks at outside objects. So it can't look at its own essential aspects, including the conscious subject who does science. The scientific process is real, but its essential aspects are outside the range of physical science, so we can't describe them physically. Since we can't describe them physically, we can't explain them physically either. From the physical point of view, they are self-manifest by physically inconceivable potency. The most obvious aspects of the material scientific process are our conscious faculties. That's purposeful activity, sense perception, and mental process. First of all, purposeful activity. We can't describe purposeful activity physically because it opposes the physical laws and does what the physical laws can't achieve by themselves. Purposeful activity can't have a physical cause. To deny its independent reality is more purposeful activity. So purposeful activity is self-evident even in the attempt to deny its reality. Purposeful activity is a self-validating entity. That's Sheila Jeev Goswami's definition of tattva, or essential reality. Now, sense perception is the means by which we perceive objects, but we can't directly perceive perception itself. For example, we see physical objects, but we can't see vision because it has no physical properties. The same is true of the other senses. Sense perception is self-evident even in the attempt to deny it. To deny the truth of what I'm saying, you have to perceive what I'm saying and assume that I will perceive what you say in response. Sense perception is also self-validating. Mental process, thinking, feeling, willing, also has no material qualities. And whatever we understand about the mind is simply more mental process. Mental process is self-evident even in the attempt to deny its reality. To say mind doesn't exist really means I think that mind doesn't really exist. Mental process is also self-validating. So the conscious faculties, purposeful activity, sense perception and mental process are real, self-evident and self-validating. We can't describe them physically, so there's no logical way to explain them physically or showing that they have a physical cause. From the physical or the objective point of view, they are inexplicably self-manifest by physically inconceivable potency. The reality that the conscious faculties actually exist is universal inconceivable potency. And the reality that we learn to use these faculties and develop them is our individual inconceivable potency. The I, the conscious self, the conscious subject who directs and coordinates our conscious faculties is an essential part of science. I do, I see, I perceive, I think. The conscious self is self-evident even in attempts to deny its reality. Suppose somebody says, I've looked for the self, but I can't find it. That I that looks for the self is actually the conscious self. The conscious self is also a self-validating entity. It's self-manifest by inconceivable potency. 
Scientists and all conscious subjects are non-physical entities that perform the non-physical functions of purposeful activity, perception and mental process. Where do we come from? How do we exist? The natural explanation is self-manifest conscious subjects exist universally because they're manifested by a universal conscious self. This natural explanation is also the most logical. Why? Because consistent explanations must follow consistent descriptions. Specifically, the causal dependence in explanations must follow the experiential dependence in descriptions. Now, our descriptions of the conscious subject are subjective. They depend on conscious subject. That means that our explanation of the conscious self also depends on conscious subject. But that conscious subject, who is the causal basis of the individual conscious subject, is the universal conscious subject, the universal self. Agreement on fundamentals is the basis of science and human life. But what does this agreement depend on? Many self-manifest conscious subjects have the same self-manifest conscious faculties as each other. They use these self-manifest conscious faculties in the same way and agree on the same conclusion. This agreement on fundamentals is self-validating because any attempt to establish a contrary opinion also depends on agreement. Agreement on fundamentals is the basis of science and human life. We can't describe it or explain it physically. It's self-manifest by the interaction of individual inconceivable potency with universal inconceivable potency. In other words, it appears when the individual conscious subjects cooperate with the universal conscious subject. The false materialistic conception is destroying human intelligence and human culture. The real basis of science and of life is the cooperation between the individual conscious self and the universal conscious self. The Vedic wisdom tradition helps us to understand this and realize it and make it the basis for conscious living and full well-being. This is the purpose, the first purpose of Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON.